Once upon a time, there was a warrior princess named Xena, and Xena had a best friend named Gabrielle. One day, Xena decided to drag Gabrielle through a creepy giant graveyard. So Xena and Gabrielle are picking their way through this giant graveyard of a couple paper mache giant bones, and it turns out they're there to meet Xena's friend, who is, you know, Goliath. But because I am a super serious scholar type person who is concerned with super serious things, I want to draw everyone's attention to the fact that Goliath is wearing one of those leather warrior person skirt thingies. There has to be a term for this. I cannot figure out what it is. I mean, Xena's wearing one, and like all the dudes in this episode are wearing them of some sort, and I don't know, leather skirt. But anyway, it begs the question, is Goliath wearing underwear? Because I don't know how tall he actually is, but I'm pretty sure that however tall he is, people are going to get a good view, and it just, it concerns me deeply about how giants protect their naughty bits from the people wandering underneath. I just, I, inquiring minds would like to know. This whole friendship with Goliath actually confuses me, because as we learn much, much later in the episode, basically Goliath and Xena were friends, and they were fighting together back in the olden days, and Goliath went to go save Xena instead of looking after his family, and his family got killed while he was away. Awkward. And so now they're, they're friends, but it's a really weird, guilty friendship, and I don't really understand, because ten years ago, wouldn't Xena have been, like, evil Xena? But anyway, they're still friends, and they agreed to meet up at this point ten years later. I don't, I don't know why you would do that. And it turns out Goliath is in the employ of some warrior dudes, and he's kind of helping them get rid of some thieves. And we do eventually meet David, and he's kind of this, you know, wimpy dude who has my high school haircut. And I'm sorry, I know I'm not, like, a biblical scholar or anything, but I'm pretty sure that Jonathan and David are supposed to be hot asses, and they're supposed to be making with the biblical man love, and, you know, that's not a part of this episode. And this concerns me deeply as, you know, as a human being. So where we are in this story is that the Philistines have invaded the Israelite land, and things are not going very well because they're kind of imposing this whole colonialism thing. And it's not cool, as we have learned. And so Xena's very like, seriously, Goliath, you're working with these dudes? That ain't right. And Goliath is all like, mm, Goliath's got to get paid, son. So Xena and Gabrielle decide pretty quickly that they're not exactly down with this whole oppressor thing and side with David and the Israelites. Why does everything sound like it would be a good band name? And Gabrielle goes to hang out with David where he's been put in prison, trying to do ye old we will burrow secretively out of our prison cell, which is inconvenient earthen works. And they're not doing a very good job of it, basically. Because of course they are found out, and they decide to kill David for this escape attempt. And Gabrielle tries the old, like, ooh, I will throw myself on top of him on the execution block, and they will never kill us both. Actually, yeah, they will. And luckily Zina is there with a chakram attack. And she's all like, zing, 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 and like, look at that thing off, people, and it's rebounding around the place. And they fight, 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 and they all escape. And Goliath, meanwhile, has not come to the Philistines' aid because he has been hiding in a convenient tree, watching all the action. And honestly, sweetheart, you're a giant. I'm pretty sure people can see you. So all the Israelites with Xena and Gabrielle in tow regroup. And we learn that giants have a secret weakness that Xena happens to know, which is that if you hit them right between the eyes, they go down like a ton of bricks. And Xena, in a beautiful moment of self-sacrifice, decides that she will volunteer to fight Goliath one-on-one, -on -one, and it will be epic and marvelous, and it will save the Israelites from this horrible war. And yes, it will be sad, but she will do it because she is brave and honorable, and Goliath has made his choice. Or something like that. Meanwhile, Gabrielle is attempting to make David into one of her flames of the week. And is all kind of like sidling up to him like, hey, David, what you doing? And he's all like, ooh, you know, I'll be writing a psalm. And she's all like, hey, man, that's hot. Read me some of that. And 
so they're sitting there reading their poetry, or whatever it is the kids are calling it these days, and sharing very significant glances, when, oh, in comes David's fiance, and Gabrielle's like, oh, nice, awkward. So then we flash ahead to the next day when it is time for the climactic fight, and surprise, Goliath shows up with a helmet. I mean, seriously, is anyone actually surprised? If you just have this one weakness, and it's really easily covered up, I'm pretty sure I, too, would just put on a hat. And of course this fight does not go the way we want it to, because Xena cannot fell Goliath in one fell swoop, and all the rest of the Philistines start attacking, attacking the Israelites, and it's all very, like, attacky, attacky, and I kind of tuned out, I'm sorry, which is dangerous in Xena, I have learned, because sometimes if you, like, tune out a fight sequence, you will miss, like, amazing boob dagger action, or, like, rocket chimney. And, like, I guess there's some of that here, because Xena ends up defeating Goliath temporarily with salt, and I don't understand, is salt a thing? I guess I would not appreciate salt in my face. But I don't, is he a slug? Are giants secretly slugs? I don't know, because he's just like, ah, salt, oh no! And it kind of surprised me, but okay, if I don't know giants, maybe that works. After this, everyone has apparently retreated to some handy caves just in time for Jonathan to kick the proverbial bucket, and Xena realizes that at this point, she can't be the one to defeat Goliath because these people need their own hero and their own leader. And I kind of just want Zena to start singing Holding Out for a Hero and David to have, like, backup singers. And I think it would be really, really cool. But I know that it's going to be a while still before we get to our Zena musical, and I'm okay with that. I honestly am. And then comes a little more hilarity because it turns out Gabrielle has been avoiding David. And I'm just... I don't know, I just find this completely hilarious. And so Gabrielle kind of says, I'm sorry, I didn't want to become an issue. Your fiancé seems really nice. And David's like, yeah, I know, she's hot. Well, I think we should just be friends and let's read some poetry. There's a lot of poetry. Because David decides to give Gabrielle his psalms just in case he doesn't make it back alive. And he decides to read her one because clearly it's time for more poetry. And he kind of takes a deep breath and is all, As I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I take a look. I can't, I can't do that anymore. I'm really sorry. <laughs> you get the joke and everybody is spared a really awkward time. Anyway, we skip ahead to the point where they have the actual battle, and Xena and David have come up with a magical plan. Because when the sun comes through the clouds, they're going to all position their shields to reflect the light right on the helmet at the sweet spot and make it super hot and uncomfortable and Goliath will have to take it off and it works and it's you know hilarious but David gets the job done and then there's like a two second melee and yay the Israelites win and it's a little weird they try to give us some tender moment between Xena and Goliath as he's laying there dying. But I'm kind of focused on the fact that he's bleeding from, you know, within his eye. And I didn't really pay attention to what he was saying because I was like, ew, that's really gross. But, you know, yay, he's dead and we win and yay. But I guess we've all learned a little something, which is kill giants right between the eyes because sometimes they pick the wrong side and David is living in a gangster's paradise. I bet you didn't know that. Well, now you do. You're welcome. No Bible myths or icons were irreparably mangled during the production of this motion picture.